Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Elder Sign Omens. We are going to be doing something a little bit different today. Um, you are looking at live video so obviously my voice isn't going to be looking as good as it, uh, or sounding as good as it normally would. Um, but it is proof that I do exist in the real world, in, the, in real space, and I'll have you all know that as a specimen, yes, I'm in tears. Okay, so you are looking at Elder Sign Omens. You are currently looking at on a uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 3, but it is available on PC, which is where I would normally play it. But um, given the nature of the game, it actually seems to be uh, better played on a mobile platform, whether it's uh, iOS or, or uh, Android. Um, but uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because it is available on Steam, and you should uh, check it out if you don't have access to a smartphone or a tablet or anything like that. It's a digital adaptation of a dice game uh, from Fantasy Flight Games, that's their logo right there, and they actually um, used the theme from another one of their popular board games called Arkham Horror, which is friggin' awesome, you should look it up and get it and uh, drive yourself nuts trying to play it. Um, but before we go into this, I actually wanted to show you the uh, physical components of the game because I do have the real actual physical game. Okay, so before we jump into the actual uh, mobile port of the game, I do want to show off a few of the components of the physical game. It'll probably make the digital game make a little bit more sense. These are just some of the components. When you actually have the full game out there, um, it gets ridiculously busy on your table. Not nearly as busy as Arkham Horror or any other Final Fantasy Flight games. Uh, as far as Fantasy Flight games go, this is a little bit uh, light on the components, but it's still got a whole bunch of tokens and all that kind of crap. So, um, the best way to describe it is that these these green dice here are your... It is the main mechanic of the game. So in a way, you can describe this as uh, Lovecraft Horror Yahtzee. Only the point of the game is not uh, to score points, but to take care of this dude right here, uh, essentially this is just a big old bad guy who's uh, trying to break through to the world. And uh, your job as the players, as investigators in the 20s or something like that, uh, are out to stop him from coming in to our world and destroying things. So everything takes place uh, for this game inside a museum. And I believe the museum is actually located in the fictional town of Arkham, Massachusetts. Some uh, trivia for you. This over here is, it, or these, the scroll, the uh, the magnifying glass, and the other scroll, uh, that doesn't come into play until the very end of the game, uh, if you really screw up. The bigger part is this here. These circles here are, called, are known as the Doom Track, and uh, as you play the game, you, you will earn points on the Doom Track. This one's particularly deadly because anytime you see one of these green ones, uh, that means a monster is going to appear. So the whole point of the game is you want to find 12. In this one, this has 12, but all of them have a different number. Uh, in this particular case, the players want to find 12 Elder Signs before we get 8, 9, 10 uh, markers on the Doom Track. If the Doom Track fills up, the Ancient One, in this case, Glacky, will awaken, and um, you will start to have to battle him. Now, that is the actual physical game. The digital game is going to be a little bit different, and I will go over that. The meat of the game are these cards right here. This is an adventure card. Uh, I don't know if you can read it. I apologize if you can't, but I will read it for you. Um, the title is right here. It's called Something Has Broken Free. Uh, this is just flavor text. Um, this is actually a really good example of uh, what you'll see in the digital game because it has a terror effect. Which means, if you roll this little ugly symbol, uh, and you fail, these are your tasks here. If you fail these tasks, and one of your um, die results is this thing, uh, you get this terror result, which means you immediately fail. Uh, terror results will actually change from the adventure card to adventure card. And in the physical game, as well as in the digital game, you have always have six on the table. This is just one of them. Down here are the tasks that you must uh, complete. So when you're rolling and all that kind of stuff, rolling these wonderful dice, um, they all, they're obviously not standard dice. You have 
Those are called investigation markers. One, two, they go up one, two, and three. You have a skull, which is known as peril. You have this thing, which is terror. And you have this thing, which is lore, which is actually a scroll. Um, so in this particular case, you have to roll uh, one skull and two terrors to complete this. And these are your rewards. You get a monster, which is not really a reward, a clue token, a spell, and a unique item. It'll make sense when I go through the digital game. Um, the other part here is monsters, and this is a really good one. Um, this is a warlock. You can actually, there's text on the back uh, that tells you what it is, and there's some flavor text. Um, but if one gets summoned, you see how this has a white border? You actually just put that right on top. This is hard to do through the camera. <laughs> and uh, now you have to complete this task and this task instead of the one that was underneath it. Um, and this one in particular locks the red die, which... You have these two special dice. Uh, they change the results. So the red one actually has a wild. That is supposed to be an investigator with a gun out. And that can be any result you like. This one is uh, particularly good. It doesn't have a terror um, result. But what it does is have this for investigation, which is the highest on the yellow die. On a green die, it's three. And uh, so basically the, the clock goes around as people take their turns. I don't have a turn, right? Uh, midnight is pretty much where everything goes wrong. Every time you uh, hit midnight, you draw a card like this. Um, this is called your Mythos card. Don't think I can get it into focus. Um, this one particularly says, the stars align, add one doom to the uh, doom track. One doom token to the doom track, I should say. And then there's the, your um, lingering effect at the bottom here, which in this case is all adventure cards have one additional sanity penalty today. So you draw that every uh, midnight, and that's kind of um, the way the actual game works. And then uh, as you complete, some of the rewards here will actually give you an Elder Sign, which will get you to the two, 12 that you need on this guy. And um, that is pretty much how the physical game works. Oh, actually, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that... Um, let me just get over here, here. Yeah. Uh, the Unseen Forces expansion, which is right here, uh, makes the, the physical game a lot harder, but, you know, I'm not dig digging that out. Um, you have Blessed and Cursed Dices, which have, uh, dices, a dice, I should say, uh, Blessed and Cursed Dice that will change, uh, the outcomes. This does not appear in the physical game, but, as far as Elder Sign, uh, Unseen Forces go, there are some elements in the digital game, um, that incorporate... Uh, that uh, uh, from un Unseen Forces that are incorporated into the actual game. Now, I'm going to take an aside because I made my own mistake here. Alright, we're going to do a little bit of the demonstration because this is one of my biggest pet peeves. This is a die. This is dice. One die, two dice. One die, three dice. One die, four dice. Not dices. And this is not a dice, okay? Uh, and the other thing here, <laughs> since I've got it open, this is a tackle box. It doesn't come with the actual game. Fantasy Flight Games makes awful boxes. I had to tear out the inside and buy this stupid thing and put it together. You can even see I've got extra ones uh, for all the other friggin' games that they got. Fantasy Flight Games, fix your game. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you uh, a good game box. Hang on a second. This is uh, the game box for Takenoko. Great game. I'm not going to talk about it though. Um, but as a comparison, so this is the instructions here. This, my friends, is how you make a game box, okay? You got your player cards. Everything has its own space. Granted, the tokens and all that kind of stuff are not nearly as complicated as Elder Sign or Shut Up Dog <laughs> or... Uh, Anything Fantasy Flight makes, but come on. Clearly, I mean, this is a massive box. Look at this. Um, but, and, and it, I mean, it doesn't need all of this space, but in terms of a great box insert, this is the way to do it. Fantasy Flight, get your shit together. All right, so this is the game proper, the digital version. Uh, let's just start a new game here. And I apologize in advance for the sound. Um... So the ancient one that uh, that uh, I went over before, uh, Glacky, he's not in this. He's part of the Unseen Forces. Here, as you choose your ancient ones, uh, the base game on um, 
Android or iOS or I don't know what other platform it's on. Uh, it only comes with four different um, ancient ones and then you have to go and buy the DLC to get the other ones. So the base game on the Android and uh, iOS is going to run you just under or just over five bucks. And then uh, the DLC, I believe, is probably around three bucks each. Ah, oh, screw this. No, we do not want to. Uh, you know what? Whatever. Three bucks. And you will get uh, Cthulhu. Uh, who else is there? Dark Pharaoh. And Ithaqua. And all that kind of stuff. So the base game is only going to come with four. Now, if you get this on Steam on the PC, you actually get all of the DLC at once. But it does run you about 15 bucks. So, um... Again, the, I think this lends itself better to portable play than anything else. Uh, we'll just take on uh, Yig or whatever. Um, so you remember earlier uh, when I showed you the Doom track, which is here, everything is pretty much the same. Uh, this says 10. I don't know if that's showing up. Um, so you need 10 Elder Signs to get him. But over here and over here, there's something missing. And essentially what that is is... Um, if the if the Doom Track awakens, you have no chance. Not, uh, unlike the actual physical game, you cannot fight the Ancient One. You actually have locked investigators, right? So you can unlock one by beating the hardest boss that you get, which is uh, uh, Azathoth. But then um, all the rest, all these guys, they come with the the DLC, whichever one. There's, so there's two expansions. Um, and they each give you the ancient ones and they give you a set of investigators to play with as well as um, a bonus one to unlock. So let's take a look at in the investigators. Now in the physical game, each player um, will take one investigator and they will play as them. Um, it's also a great game to solo so you can actually do what you're doing here in this game which is play all four or if you want... To really do the multiplayer experiences, you pass them around. Each um, investigator has sanity and stamina. This guy is particularly strong in sanity and not so much in health. Um, that all comes into play when you do your adventures. And um, every single one of these guys has their own uh, special ability. This uh, particular guy, Harvey Walters, um, he can change a terror into a lore. Now, one of these things is in the game they actually call rolling dice conjuring glyphs because they want to really kind of make the dice rolling invisible even though it's totally, totally obvious. Um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, for you to choose from. Each one has different abilities. These are the com uh, starting items, unique item, two spells, uh, common item is the gun. And some have a clue token, which will come in useful later. I always randomize it, but you can always go through, especially if you're trying to unlock that other character. It's good to choose who you want. Um, and we'll, we'll, we will proceed to the museum. So there are a few cutscenes. There's one at the beginning and there's one at the end if you fail. And there's one at the end if you have uh, succeeded. We're just going to skip that. So again, the premise is that the Ancient One is going to try and come break through into our world and through this museum. And uh, you'll see here, this is just a setup, a little bit of theme for you. Um, this museum map does not exist in the physical game. Again, you only have these adventure cards. Um, you can always review your, uh, your, the ancient one you're fighting here. Sorry for the focus. Uh, so here, up here, this blue thing attracts the elder signs that you have. The number below is how many doom tokens you've got. Number uh, this thing below is uh, how many monsters are in play, and there aren't any. This is your clock. So these green dots all represent your die. You have your red die here and your yellow die here. They call them glyphs, and uh, you can check all your investigators here. Uh, they each spawn with their own items. So the yellow and red uh, dies. Dies. I just went on a rant about that, didn't I? The yellow and red dice <laughs> um, need to be summoned. They are not part of your dice pool. And um, you can use items like this to do this. His, and uh, what else uh, do I have to say here? Not much. Uh, this number here represents the trophy. So every adventure you beat, every monster you beat, 
is worth trophies and you can trade those in later um, yeah well whatever so as an overview you can see that this particular um, adventure has all these tentacles on it it means there's a terror effect on that adventure so you can double tap it to look at it you can look at it without actually opening this but I'm just doing it just for the hell of it great picture there so you can see for this one uh, instead of the tasks they they well they're still tasks but instead of those that that little um, horizontal bar you now have an actual picture task and you can actually get a little bit of flavor text by tapping on it uh, use the book to conjure the glyphs and complete the task or whatever um, now you can actually get the adventure card text by clicking up there so before you've rolled anything uh, you don't actually have to uh, complete this one you can return to the map and this is where two trophies you get the the flavor text blah 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 let me just close this here um, so for this one all you need to pass this is a sc uh, skull and a terror or a peril and a terror if you will these represent your glyphs and this is just how you start your roll um, now here's the big thing if we fail this we will lose two sanity these are little brains of four and uh, but the rewards are high so besides the monster which we don't like we get a clue token a unique item and an elder sign now I'm probably gonna fail this but I'm gonna show it to you here come on oh I gotta close this uh, bring up your inventory we will summon the yellow glyph and let's summon the red one not that I need it for this it's probably a waste but this is just for demo purposes and uh, you roll like this okay so I didn't roll a terror or a skull <laughs> so uh, as per the rules of the game you must discard one die when you fail um, we'll do that it doesn't matter which one so this little box is uh, your investigator he pops up if you want him to hold a die for you since we don't have a result we need we're not going to do that now here's the thing that's a little bit different um, than the physical game the rules of the physical game mean uh, say that you can only hold once or uh, have someone assist you uh, per roll you can't do two at once this game is a little bit more forgiving um, and that basically if I had more people on this card all of their pictures would show up and you can actually have each one hold a die which is not the same as the physical game um, however the the reason why they've done that is because this game is so much harder now uh, for this particular um, challenge we have to remember that the terror and the skull as well as the scroll only show up on one side of each die so that's why um, uh, we almost never get anything so now I've actually rolled a wild which means if I click it I can choose whatever I want it to be now this is where you're gonna see the hold come in play because we don't have a terror we need a terror so I'm gonna discard one and I'm gonna have him hold it you can only do that once but you can again if you have other guys there you can put it all on top and uh, we'll just continue on until I get a terror or fail now actually I don't need the yellow one. Oh, there's my terror so now we can actually complete so this actually had a terror um, uh, a terror effect on the card so if I were to fail if I could not complete this task and discarded a card I would suffer the terror which is you fail this adventure after discarding a glyph so good thing uh, rolling a terror on this one is very bad but again we have what we need so we're gonna change this into a skull because we've held the die or the glyph I should say and now we just drag them and we've completed we collect all of the rewards two trophies we get a monster we get an elder sign we get a clue token we get our, another red glyph conjurer as well as two trophies now what you need trophies for okay we actually have a lock and a monster so that's good uh, what you would need your trophies for is the entrance here never gets infected with anything it is kind of your go-to health station you can spend a turn and just gain stamina or sanity for free or you can raise uh, spend two tokens to raise either one full or four tokens for both of them full you can also do a kind of roulette uh, just to see if you can pick something up you have a punishment of or a possible punishment 
of losing sanity and losing stamina. And then you have the souvenir shop where basically you can spend trophies and get items. Uh, sometimes that actually comes very handy, but remember when you do this, you loot, that is your turn and it goes on to the next investigator. Um, let's just kill this. Now here, you can see how it's kind of pulsing green. That means there's a green lock. You can also see it here that there's a lock icon on one of the green glyphs. And this hand that's popping out of the uh, challenge, it means there's a monster on top. So if we go and take a look at it, the monster is this cobra dude. It's called a serpent sentry. And we get a doom plus one. So, oh, here's, here's another thing. To beat him, we only need a one investigate. And that's the only way to clear him off of the adventure. But the price for killing him is we get a doom on the doom track. A doom token on the doom track. Which, of course, will bring us closer to failure. And um, he may be covering something up. I don't actually know. Um, but this is the actual card's task. Again, it's got flavor task. There were great truths to be found by those who knew where to look for them. And it requires two peril, blah, 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 blah. Not a bad punishment, only sanity. A clue token is our reward, a spell is a reward, and we'll spawn another monster because the game likes to dick you like this. Now, if I was playing the physical game, I would say this is not that hard. This, there's something about the random number generator in this game that really, really doesn't want to give you the singles, or, or more than one of them. Sometimes you'll roll all scrolls, which makes no sense, but for the most part, it's really hard to get more than one skull, more than one scroll, or more than one terror. Although, terror does appear to show more often than not. So I, I'm going to call shenanigans on this game. Uh, risk reward. Uh, reward is going to be an elder sign, a unique item, and a clue. The clues allow you to re-roll as many dice as you want before discarding or before completing your task. Um, let's see if we actually have one. We do not. Um, the other thing here is we have a spell. I'm going to just show it to you here. Yeah. So spells allow you to lock dice outside of your one focus roll, which is when you put when you drag the, the uh, glyph over to your guy's face. Um, this allow you to lock something before discarding and all that kind of stuff. It's basically an extra focus. Now in the actual physical game, when you lock a die to a spell, it stays there until it gets used. Um, so even if you fail the adventure or whatever, it's not available for anyone to roll, but it's available for anyone to use in their roll. In this, um, if you don't use it, it's gone. Everything goes back to the, the dice pool or the glyph pool, if you will. And uh, the biggest thing here is that, uh, sorry, as you see, she has 6 sanity and 4 stamina. Each of these, these characters have this stat. Here we go, 4 and 6, 7 and 3, etc, etc. If you fail in this game, again, as an example of this, you take this penalty instantly. Now, if either one of these goes to zero, you lose your investigator. In the actual physical game, if that happens, you just roll a new investigator out of the pool and you continue on as normal. Uh, so it, the, the physical game gives you a lot of grace. This digital version of the game is absolutely punishing. So as I showed you before, uh, there's an expansion called uh, Unseen Forces. It makes the game so much harder. So before I put that into my game, I was able to to, I would say 50-50 uh, win or fail this game. After I put Unseen Forces in, I've been failing ever since I have yet to beat it. I know it's beatable, uh, but I'm just really bad at rolls here. Uh, but the big thing is, they've taken away the handicap, uh, or they've handicapped you by not allowing you to roll another investigator once you're done, or once one of them is dead. And um, they've also added in the harder cards. So remember that little Mythos card I showed you that had the two halves? A lot of those in the physical game give you an out. So it'll be like, add um, a Doom token to the Doom track, unless someone has a spell, or unless has, someone has a Clue token. In this one, they made all of those cards harder. There is hardly any uh, get out free. There are a few where there's no effect, but most of them are just like, 
add the doom, whatever you're screwed. I actually have one where you add three instantly to the doom track. It's pretty bad. The whole point is to collect, um, is to collect elder signs and uh, also manage the doom track. You see now I've got nothing but she has a spell. So what we are going to do, just as an example, I'm gonna, wait, what do I need? It's Skull Scroll. So this is actually a really hard one to do for me. So I'm gonna put the skull on my spell card. I'm gonna discard one of these and then I'm gonna have her hold a scroll. Now it leaves me with three dice to roll a terror which uh, isn't good because the yellow does not roll uh, terror. Then I got another scroll, so I'm screwed. Oh, I should have used that scroll, shouldn't I? Anyways, I totally just screwed up. Uh, that's because I'm not concentrating. Anyways, we failed it, so I'm going to show you how it looks when you fail. Now, one of the things that I complain about in this game is that if you are in a no-win situation, for example, uh, if you have a task like that one there that needed three, um, at least three dice. So where was that one? That was here. So for example, this needs three dice, right? You can't possibly do this with anything less than three dice. However, if in this game you are down to two, you still have to continue discarding unless you've locked them and uh, it's a bit of a time waster. They should have implemented that better. When I'm playing the physical game, if I know that I can't possibly do it, I just save the time and move on. So this one actually is a good one because it's got a midnight effect, which I didn't go over. So at midnight, all investigators lose two trophies. It's a pretty, pretty uh, bad punishment because trophies are your life sign, especially when you can't refresh your investigators. And the only way they can heal is to spend trophies, so this is actually pretty bad. Um, but it's also pretty hard. You need four scrolls, or four lore if you will, plus three investigation. Now remember before, when I said um, a lore, a peril, and a terror, they only appear on one, one die face. I've got no items to help me out. But I've got... What the hell is that? Turn, oh, okay, so we've got an item that we can actually change something to the result we want, which is really good. Got one scroll. We can't really do anything. However, we can change a terror into a scroll. Okay, and now I'm going to use my... Oh, I've got two! So, you know, we're going to save the random one. We're going to use this to change something into a scroll. So this is, in this way you can manipulate the results you get, but only if you're lucky enough to have the items that you need. Um, I'm actually going to use the terror to a scroll, and then we're going to hold it, and hopefully we'll roll an investigation. And you see, random number generator gets me, it's a one investigation, I cannot complete the damn task. Oh, but maybe I can, because I can change this into any result I want. So there you go! We just beat it with items. Normally that would have been a fail. And of course the game is being nice to me because it knows it's being uh, friggin' videoed. Alright, so this is midnight. After everyone's had their turn, you get a midnight strike. You get a mythos effect. This time we get a doom and a monster. It's not as bad as some of the other ones that you can get in here. Some will give you three dooms, some will give you a whole bunch of monsters. Some will take sanity from everyone, which is really bad because sometimes after your turn you're left with one. And then the game just robs you of it and goes and kills half your party. Good times. And uh, this is an effect from a monster that is on the map. I totally missed them. But he's got an at midnight um, condition, which is negative one stamina. So you can see everyone's going to be hurt really bad. I just squeaked by with most of my investigators there. Uh, who is the one? So she's going to die unless she spends trophies. Um, which we didn't lose. So, oh, there he is. So if I... Oh. It's just a card, it's not a monster, okay. 
So I totally, I think this card just spawned after I beat it, or beat another one. So one thing that I'm not going to get to, that I can't show you, but here is a reward that is, uh, an opens a door to another world. Another world is a different kind of adventure um, that exists outside of the six. So you have the six plus whatever ones that you have open. Um, those have very great rewards, but they are much harder to beat. Most of them. And uh, most of the time, they will have very dire consequences if you fail them. So again, this entire game is based on risk and reward. Um, as far as uh, mechanics go, that's pretty much it.